Okay guys, it's Alex here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, hope you all had a good Christmas and everything like that. Um, we've been pretty busy, so I haven't done a video for a little while. Um, Christmas was manic, just trying to dry logs, get them delivered out to customers, all of that kind of stuff. And um, to top that all off, uh, in the secondary digester, we had a big foam out. I fed it too much and um, we had uh, about sort of 50 cubes come out as a sort of foamy liquid out of the bag just by being fed too hard uh, on a bit of a rich mixture. And so Ray and Kay and Richard <laughs> did a fantastic job cleaning all that up uh, with our tanker. Um, so there we are. But um, I think it was Carl you asked and said, um, how does the heating system work? So we'll just have a little look at that and try and explain how um, all of our RHI stuff works here. So let's have a look. Okay guys, so this is where we had our spill. Uh, it actually came out of that pipe there, which is designed to take the gas out of the Cobby bag. And it was actually coming out around the corner as well with our pressure relief valve. Uh, there's still a little bit here. You can see it's hard to get the very last little bits of digestate up. Fortunately, the Cobby bag has now gone back um, but it was really foaming out for a couple of hours and just created a lot of work and mess. So, lesson learned. Okay guys, as you may know, we've got two CHPs, the one in the process building behind and that one there. Uh, this one was put in in November 13 and that one was 2015. Um, so, um, they've been running now, this one sort of close to 10 years. Uh, they're exotically named CHP1 and CHP2, uh, no prizes for guessing why that is, uh, but we'll go and take a look inside and just have a look at the header and show you what's going on. Okay, so here's CHP1. Um, the hot water comes out of this CHP and then it comes through this pipe here, so it's coming out at 85 degrees and it's going back into the engine at 70 degrees. All the heat is monitored by this heat meter in there, which is currently reading uh, 2,389 megawatts of heat we've used. Um, I can have a look at the engine here. Yeah, hot water's going out at 83, coming back to 65. So that's doing what it does. Um, there's a series of different heat uses on here and we'll just run through those. Um, we've also got a boiler here that if the hot water isn't hot enough, we can boost it up. So in the winter that runs quite a bit. It's also got its own heater, which is there. Uh, and it runs out through this, and it goes out to our dryer outside, uh, that then heats the logs, and it goes back over cooling fans if it's too hot in the summer, and comes back in here. So currently, that is coming back at 60, back into the header. Um, and it should be going out, yeah, there it is, going out at just over 60. Uh, and as I said, it can get boosted up by this boiler. Um, what do we got? Next one along is our district heating scheme for the house. And that is coming back at 60 and it's going out at 80. Um, and as you'll see, we'll go and have a look in the hall and just show you how that's, how that's operating, basically. Um, and then this one here actually heats the tank and keeps that all warm and our secondary digester. So that's outside. So we're going to take a look at that. So this pipe here runs from um, inside and then it heats up the combi bag. It goes underground, uh, pokes up over here and heats up our secondary digester. There's a whole load of coils underneath this big bag and uh, that takes the heat and keeps that, that one warm. Um, and then we've got another pipe run that goes out to inside this, this box. Uh, it's a series of pipes going back and forth with a water jacket over the top. Uh, the next pump runs all the time, pulling digestate out of the tank and then into that uh, box there, the heat exchanger. And then there's that big silver pipe there that then goes back to the front of the tank and it puts the hot liquid back into the tank and keeps that whole tank pretty hot. It needs to be about 38, 39 degrees in there. So that's what's happening there. These pipes here run underground into a twin core pipe, which is insulated. 
and that takes hot water uh, down to the hall. I spoke about the, um, the pipes coming out. You can see the dryer back there. And then if the water's uh, too hot still for the engine, especially in the summer, it goes over these cooling rads and loses excess heat there. And these pipes here take the hot water into this dryer. This used to be a digestate dryer. And this little silver bit on top used to have a separator on, but we took that off and sold that. And the separated material used to drop in here and we dry that, but then we got into logs drying and I thought, well, let's flip this around, which we did, and capture the exhaust vent and put it into this concrete box that we built. Um, and you can see the heat exchanger up there with all the coils on the side. So that then provides hot air. In the summer, it gets up to about 50 degrees. In the winter, it's, well, it depends on your ambient temperature, but it's probably about 30 in there at the moment. So it takes a little bit longer to dry down the logs, but it does a good job. And we've stuck an another fan in there because you just want it very windy, basically. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And then we'll just take a look at CHP2. Um, you can see running down the outside, those silver pipes, and it goes along in a line here pops up along here and then it goes into a twin core pipe again and it pops up goes all the way along that uh, that concrete wall down the side of the clamp and up to the dryer up there so we're going to take a look at that okay so here's our wood chip dryer that runs off the heat from chp2 um, that's the hopper which you fill with wood chip um, uh, but actually we own, we've converted it over to running on um, logs. So we've got this container box and we just take the exhaust vents out of the, out of the dryer, plug them in the back of this and it actually does a great job drying logs. So um, that's what we're doing at the moment. So just inside there is the heat meter that reads uh, the RHI payments. Um, the hot water comes in through here. It goes down under the ground. It runs along the side of the clamp there. And it comes out CHP2, which you can just see in the distance. Okay guys, so here's the water coming in. Uh, it's coming in at 60. Um, and there it is going out. <sighs> Don't know if you can see that very well, but it's losing a, about five degrees on what it's coming in at. Um, and then it goes over here. And we've got the header here, taking the hot water. Um, and you've got the heat exchanger back here, this little unit, which is very small actually. Uh, for all the hot water that the house uses here. Um, so yeah, that's, and then we've got our heat meter there. So that is reading, if I can read it. Uh, looks like about, yeah, 1,165 megawatts. So we've used in about the last 10 years of of heating from the AD plant. So yeah, we'll go and um, you know, that's worked quite well for the house really, just keeping us nice and warm. Um, and it's the run down to the house is about 700 meters. So you'll see that it loses a fair amount of temperature coming down here uh, on the run. I think that's probably because the pipes weren't put in correctly. And one day if we get the energy, we'll probably dig up sections of it and try it with a heat meter and try and see where all the heat loss is happening. Because it should be a little bit warmer coming down than 60. Okay, so it actually runs into the outside of the house here. And um, we've got the oil tank here. So when uh, we have a failure on the plant, we can still get the hole heated. Uh, but then the rest of the time it's coming in there and heating it up so anyway guys hope you enjoyed all that and um found it interesting um so yeah we'll try and get a video out next week okay see you guys next time cheers